We're going to hear about South College's multi-campus technology deployment. Presenting are Mark Jones, who's the director of IT at South College, and Michael Lisi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, you know. from Wolf Vision. Take it away, Michael and Mark. Thank you, Susan. And, and thank you everyone for, for joining. Uh, so just to kind of give you a quick background on how we put this together, we just realized so many schools are struggling to figure out what is their hybrid learning strategy going to be moving forward. And rather than a manufacturer tell you all the things we think you should do and yada, yada, we thought it'd be great to just take uh, one of our clients who worked their way through it for the first time, just like most universities, and just let them tell you what their experience has been, the thought process behind it, mistakes made, lessons learned, what's worked, what hasn't. Uh, just somewhat as a benefit to the larger community. So I, I wanted to thank Mark Jones uh, for joining us. Mark, thank you for participating. And uh, right off the bat, Mark is the director of IT for South College. And what we'd like to do is just start, maybe take a quick moment to, Mark, if you don't mind, give a quick uh, overview of the college, your operations, the focus, the size, you know, brief history, something like that for about a minute, if you don't mind. Sure, it, it would be great. Yeah, South College, I've been with them for 13 years. Uh, we're one of the fastest growing colleges in the United States, uh, small college growing up, and uh, we've got six locations now. And with COVID coming out in March, it was quite an interesting uh, change. We went from uh, being pretty much on ground to I uh, had to move 600 faculty and staff in five days to work from home and then we added Zoom and then we've been bringing uh, students back and then sending them back home. <laughs> so uh, um, all of the technology that we added to the classrooms and, and all of that has really been uh, instrumental to being allow South College to grow. Uh, we hit, uh, I think we're hit at 6,000 students now, total and 1,100 uh, said uh, staff uh, around the United States and, and working through that, the, our online presence has grown tremendously with a lot of response of, of uh, students wanting to learn from home and, and not have to go into class. That's right. And one of the things I found fascinating right off the bat is you've got, you know, five different physical locations or brick and mortar locations or four plus your whole online department. And, and you're, you've seen a major shift in your online taking over um, your primary method of instruction. Is that right? We're seeing a lot of growth in that sector. It has taken a lot. We went to, we had Canvas uh, that we use for our online class delivery of, of courses. And then we have Zoom for recording the courses. And then we have Panopto that we, have as a, an online, we've got about 50 terabytes of video storage up there now for students uh, anywhere from our physician's assistants to our doctor of pharmacy, doctor of physical therapy, and in the undergrad as well to be able to go in and review the classes and, and watch it uh, 24 hours a day. And, and I guess to that point, what on a scale of zero to 10, you know, what percentage of your instruction requires in-person engagement, right? There's some things that are lecture-based where I could just consume the media virtually, but there's other stuff that's lab-based or you're actually having to model against a simulator or you're using physical tools that you can't do virtually. What, what would be the breakdown for South College currently? Um, the interesting thing is, is most of the physical brick and mortar, they're probably about 80%, uh, they have to be uh, on grounds. Uh, with online, 100% online, but more and more, we're probably going toward a 50% model where, and even with doctor of physical therapy, we're at an 80% model where <clears throat> the students, to get your physical therapy doctor degree, 80% of the time you're online, and two weeks out of uh, the 10-week quarter, they physically come here and, and have to go through the orientation or go through the actual physical movements and, and, and manipulations. So that was one of our challenges is that now we have 300 students on campus and we have to now split them into all the different classrooms and stream between the classrooms. And we have in the main classroom, we'll set up, uh, you may have a picture of that. We have cameras so that the instructor can actually watch 
and manipulate the student and everybody and all the other classrooms spread out can do the same thing. And even at home, we have to, with Zoom, we will have some students that can't travel, they'll pair up together to know each other uh, so that we can accomplish this without everybody physically being on ground. So it's, it's uh, you know, we've at one time for about, I guess, during the March, April timeframe, we were 100% uh, remote. So, I mean, we kind of began to dive into it already then. I I guess what I, I'd like to ask you is moving into this as you were making this transition, what what really is your vision uh, for an ideal arrangement moving forward in the future? You, you've seen traditional classroom systems. You know what that looked like. You've managed that. You obviously had a goal in mind when you started out on this this new endeavor. What If, if you had a magic wand and you could just cr imagine your perfect system, what what did that look like when you started this activity? Uh, it, it was it was very very challenging to start with. We were using a traditional method of uh, uh, classrooms of going in and whether we used and, and I know Crestron's on here. We've got a lot of their equipment and different pieces and all that together. And so we had to come up with a much more simplistic approach. So we that's where I actually ran into Wolf Vision and their Sinai product and over at uh, UT here in Knoxville. Uh, that, that allows us to just have a, an individual room that everything is connected together and we can connect all the rooms together <clears throat> from a technology perspective as far as the audio, the video, and then also adding Zoom in there to be able to bring it in um, from the classes as well in remote campuses where it's in Atlanta or Nashville or, you know, wherever. Uh, but th that was a huge challenge is, is, is to really – uh, bring in and simplify everything uh, because it, and create a totally different support model uh, and for the instructor to be able to use. So, and I've seen, you know, some of these spaces. So what I think we're, we're going to talk about next in terms of like, how have you fulfilled that vision? What, what you had in mind was you needed to have a simple in-room experience so that faculty can embrace the workflow. But more than ever before, you had to connect classroom to classroom and classroom to students who are virtual and finding a way to incorporate all that into your traditional system design. Meanwhile, again, the workflow for the faculty has to be simple. You don't overwhelm them. And secondly, um, the focus is on really having a good video experience where you're capturing all the content you want to be able to share and be able to sort of switch between different cameras and different, you know, switching between presentation content versus live image. That sounds like that was sort of the task at hand because there is a big part of it that at least that 20% that's gonna be very hands-on. Um, let's talk about how you've done it. So can you describe, um, first of all, how you came to the system design that you went with? And then secondly, what does that system design look like and how are you how are you doing it? Sure. Hey, when we built our facility here 11 years ago in Knoxville, uh, we, and we went in with a, pretty much the traditional uh, Crestron controls, uh, PC in the, in the classroom and, and mics and everything controlled with a, a digital sound processor and all of that. And it, it, it worked great for a while. So up until the newer technology. So we had the sophisticated students, we had the sophisticated instructors and they want, you know, to bring their laptop in, they want to connect it, they want to have their notes showing up and they want to be able to put different things on every screen and they want to by the way, we've got an instructor in Canada that needs to come in and, and do all that. So uh, once we looked at that, that's where we did toured several different colleges. I did looked around and, and went over to UT talking to them and, and they had a product, uh, Wolf Vision with a sign app that allows you with one box, uh, their, their sign app that replaced pretty much all of that. So I, I literally came up with a new design I don't know if you got it in there in in in, uh, in the rack, but in the rack I had my goal was is that I can change any piece of equipment out in less than ten minutes if there's a problem in the classroom and have the class back up and running. So as you see in the in the design I've got in there, I've got the Wolf Vision in the rack. I put just a, a Behringer like a four or eight channel mixer in there. I added uh, um, a uh, some different uh, converters that comes in from either HDMI or USB 3.0 to bring the cameras in so we can multi-sync all those together. 
Uh, and then we used the professional sound mics that they use on stage at the Opry uh, and put the put in the ceiling so that they can walk around and in the classroom to classroom they can talk, ask questions, and do that. So, uh, and it, so that was one of the main thing is performance, sound, and quality, and then also very quick to repair because we've in the in the past we've had classrooms that. If you if a piece of equipment breaks down and you have to have it reprogrammed and all that, it could take up to two days. So uh, my goal was to set to be able to trade it out in uh, any piece of equipment in ten minutes, the way we designed it. That's fantastic. So, um, so you have this design, and kind of we're going to be able to create sort of campus to campus experiences, campus to student at home experiences, and all of a sudden, boom, COVID comes in and everything has to change. And a lot of schools we saw struggling to kind of adapt rapidly. It was one of the biggest undertakings I think we've seen in higher education in a long time. How did this affect what you were up to and, and what did you have to do to accommodate the change? Um, we were already sort of in the middle of the uh, change in the new design. As you can see, the classroom behind us is just a big new open classroom that can be for doctor physical therapy, we can bring in tables, we can do anything. There's cameras on the wall or in the ceilings and then roll around cameras. And and so the biggest thing we had to change was make it more flexible and the ability to think, what if there's not a single student in the classroom? There's just the instructor and the person on the stage. And so we set that up with, uh, we had to redesign our entire um, network as far as double our connection speed out to the internet uh, to a two gig circuits uh, use an SD-WAN and tie all that together because all the video and audio coming from all these classrooms uh, you could you, you could see would could cause some issues when you're trying to do it so if you've got probably 200 students on there at the same time trying to to connect in and see that we had to think of that design as well uh, with the sign app, it works well where we can connect it to two separate networks at the same time. We have it connected to our student network and our admin network. So the instructor can bring the laptop in, they connect to it, they can be connected to Zoom and, and uh, drop right in, teach class, and the next instructor can come right in behind it from down in Atlanta. So it, it's, it's very, uh, it's transactional uh, and works together very seamlessly. One thing I like I bet from the way I saw that you had it configured is that you're using the, the sign up appliance both to connect into a Zoom meeting and to Panopto. Um, and so you're able to both enable the web conferencing side of the class session and re-recording it for post-session playback. And that, I think it's kind of a clean, clean solution. It sounds like you even have two options, whether you record it through Zoom or you record it from Panopto. But uh, I, I appreciate that because a lot of schools are trying to figure out both. They've got one or the other. You can go to web conference and Zoom, or they're recording to Panopto. But I think that having that flexibility, and I guess to be fair, there's also a third approach that what you just described you've enabled is the streaming from room to room. And so if there's an overflow requirement or you've got content going yeah. on in one classroom, I mean, it sounds like in some of these courses, which I think is really kind of compelling, you have um, simulation labs at multiple campuses or in multiple rooms around a campus, and yet even though people are physically in separate rooms, they're all joined together in the same class session. Is that right? Yeah, and the key to that, they, they can't, they're not there just to watch. They have to be able to communicate back and see. So we literally, by having the, the set up that way, you can see the remote cameras. You can walk up to your sign up and, and pick the remote session and bring the cameras and audio. So you can ask questions back and forth, not just from texting and, and, and pieces like that. So I'm going to ask a, a tough question, and I, have no, I haven't prepped you on this. I have no idea what you're going to say here. But, you know, a lot of schools have used different solutions, and there are plenty of ways to skin the cat. Why did you choose this? I mean, is it that you, you didn't see other solutions, or what was it about this approach that you liked more than other solutions you saw? Because I think you've added other things as well. Well, that's a, it's, a, it's a fairly interesting, and, and I, I don't know if anybody coined this phrase. I'm looking down and reading, and I wrote it, is that a lot of the classes, the labs are what creates the issue from a lot of, you know, you have to be there to do labs. 
So I came out, uh, how do you do lab training in a virtual world? And so, and what works? And so we had looked at three or four or more different uh, solutions because we had cameras we needed to bring in. If, if somebody wanted to bring in some sort of a scope or something and connect to it through USB, and the biggest reason we picked the sign up is this works. You know, it's just, I mean, it's very simple. It just works and does what you want it to do. It, uh, you can tie those together and work. I, I know you may want more de details, but, you know, that's the big thing. It, it needs to be simplistic and it needs to work. Well, let's do this then. I'm going to, um, let's, we only have two more minutes and then we'll open up for an opportunity for some other questions if anyone else has any. Sure. So lessons learned. So in this process, you know, a lot of organizations are learning the hard way. Some, some things we do right, some things we, we wish we had done differently. What are some lessons learned through the process that if you had to do it all over again, you'd do it differently or suggestions you can make to schools that are trying it out for the first time, uh, trying to develop a hybrid learning strategy? Um, I think if I had to do it over again, I would have done it sooner maybe. Uh, and then, but with COVID, it sort of throwed, you know, slowed things down. Uh, as far as moving forward, or it did a lot of, of people, we actually worked through that and our IT staff was here and, and, and drove through that because we were trying to drive a hybrid, lear hybrid learning. Our chancellor, his challenge was he wants every classroom, whether the students are in it or not, that the instructor can stand at the podium and teach the class. He said, I know I can, they can do it in their laptop you know, in Zoom, but they want to be able to use the tools in the class. And so integrating the tools in the class, uh, I will pay a little more attention to that uh, going forward to see what the instructors need. You know, we've had several of them that, that want to annotate on it. And so the touch screens, you know, we had trouble with, with instructors actually laying their hand on the touch screen trying to write, which doesn't work with just a regular one. So we're looking at some the uh, uh, iPads or something so the instructor can carry in because they really like, since they've seen this technology, they can go around, write on it, talk, and draw up their PowerPoints and then save those out. And so it gets recorded when they hit end of the recording, the big thing they like, an hour and a half later or whenever, they get an email that the recording is done in Zoom and it's automatically transferred over to Panopto and you get four separate recordings are blended together. You got audio, you got video, and you got sort of an overview type of watching it. And it also creates, and, and needed, met one of our uh, items needed, it creates a transcript, Zoom does now, for every lecture, which is great for any type of ADA compliance. That's huge. So, I mean, I think what you brought out, and I 100% agree with this point, is engaging the faculty and talking about workflow before you finalize the system design, because that's so essential. If we don't engage them early enough, it creates problems down the road or it makes it more difficult for them to embrace the technology. And I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, yeah, with that let me we, throw one more, one more quick thing in there, and I know we're about out of time, but we asked two instructors that came in, and, and when you said workflow, that's the other big thing we're looking at. I asked one instructor, so we, we, we call a, a model, we call it a Dunbar model and a Michael model. In the Dunbar model, we asked him what he wanted. He said he just wanted a chalkboard with chalk. And then the other one wanted to have the laptop and everything with the notes. So the Dunbar model is he's going to bring in his, his uh, stick. He's going to plug it in to the sign app. It's going to bring up his PowerPoint. He's going to teach. He said that's all he wants. So... And then the other one wants all the sophistication. So we've got to have the workflows to support that. That's it. That's great. Thank you, Michael, for reminding me of that. Yeah. So I would Thank just- Thank you say, so much. Time. Yeah, email us if, yeah. if you have further questions. That's probably the best way. Yeah, and you can also visit Michael at the, or someone at the Wolf Vision booth um, in the exhibit hall. So, uh, 